We're here at the Expedex Technology Center shooting another video, and we had a few moments to explain more of the detail about this system. We hope we'll answer some of your questions along the way. Just to remind you, the Epson Stylus Pro 7900 computer to plate system is a affordable way to produce true aluminum press plates. It's a chemical free process, it's more affordable both in the, both in the cost to acquire the system as well as the ongoing maintenance costs. And third, it's actually very simple to use. And we thought the best way to show that to you is if we actually walked you through the entire process. So first, let's talk about what's included in the system. The first thing that's included in the system is a standard Epson Stylus Pro 7900 printer. There's nothing special about the printer other than we've also included this plate guide. Now this plate guide assures accurate registration print to print, plate to plate. And it's also included in the system. The third thing that's included in the system is this EFI Express computer to plate rip. The next piece is the plate curing unit, also called the PCU. Now this is a chemical free process as I mentioned before, so this is just a heater. It applies heat to the surface of the Epson direct plate material to cure the plate so they're ready to be used on press. I'd recommend that you schedule about half a day from the time the box shows up before you're ready to put a plate on a press. That will give you time to set up and calibrate and go through all the processes that I'm going to talk about now. Um, the second is, is what tools are required. Well, a lot of the Allen keys and the Allen wrenches you need are included as part of the setup kit. The only thing you might need on top of that is a, a ruler that has millimeters on it and maybe a wrench and some screwdrivers. Very simple stuff. Everything else is included inside the box. Uh, in addition, you're going to need two other things prior to setting up the machine. The first is you want to make sure you have power for the plate curing unit. Now the plate curing unit uses 220 volt power. So you're going to want to make sure you have an electrician come in ahead of time and install that power so you're ready to go. The Epson Stylus printer uses standard 110 so you should be able to plug that directly in a wall without any problem. You want to make sure you have a computer. It needs to be a Windows based computer. We do recommend that you use something based on Windows 7. Um, that will make sure that you're compatible with all of the latest, uh, fastest computer technology that the EFI Express can take advantage of. First thing you're going to want to do when you get the box there is you're going to want to set up the printer. Um, so you're going to want to take this uh, 7900 printer out of the box. You're going to install the stand. You're going to put it all together. You're going to plug it in. You're going to install the inks as necessary. And the documentation gives you a lot more specifics on that. That should take you about half hour, 45 minutes. Um, the next thing you're going to want to do, maybe while you're setting that up, is you're going to want to install the EFI Express software. Um, it's very simple. All you want to do is you want to go ahead and install the CD into your Windows computer, follow the on-screen instructions. Now, don't forget you're going to need a USB port. It comes with a USB key that provides all the licensing for the EFI Express RIP. Um, after you've installed the RIP and you've installed the printer, you're going to want to go ahead and install the plate guide onto the printer. It's a very simple process. All you got to do is use the included Allen keys to screw the plate guide on so it's flush up against the edge of this black piece. And then since you've already installed the rip, you're going to want to go ahead and cue it up to print an alignment sheet. Now an alignment sheet looks just like this. It'll come out of the printer after you've printed it. You're going to go ahead and make a couple measurements from here to this point and from here to this point, just to assure that you're registered plate to plate, print to print. Once that part's done, you're going to walk over here to the plate curing unit, um, and you're going to want to apply Thermax strips. Those are temperature sensitive strips that will tell you exactly how hot this plate curing unit is coming up to. You apply those to the plate, and you run it through the plate curing unit, and then you just measure the strips when they come out. The panel settings on the plate curing unit are set from the factory and they should be good for most people. It's set to a temperature in the green of 190 degrees and the red display shows you the exact temperature. Now that will fluctuate a little bit as the plate curing unit heats up and slows down. And when this light comes on, that's when it's actually applying heat to the plate curing unit. This is the speed, it's set to 1.5 and again all of this should be set up when it comes out of the box. You just want to double check and make sure it's set correctly. If you do run the test uh, plate through with the Thermax strips on it and you find that it's a little low in temperature, you can increase the temperature or you can decrease the speed to accommodate for that. After you've set up the printer, you've installed the rip, you've calibrated the plate curing unit, you've aligned that plate guide, you're ready to make your first plate. Now one other thing I want to point out is if you're using larger plates, 
you're going to need to purchase the large plate accessory kit. It includes two things. It includes this large plate guide, which instead of this guide will allow you to use larger plates. In addition, it comes with extensions for the uh, trays on the plate curing unit. Um, that's all included in the plate guide, and that's for when you're using plates that are over, say, 16 or 17 inches wide. So with that, I've given you a kind of a brief overview of the whole installation process. The next thing we're going to go ahead and do is show you how the whole thing works from start to finish, and we'll go ahead and put some plates on that press. All right, so now we want to show you a little bit about how the EFI Express computer to plate rip works. Now, uh, you will still be able to use your existing workflow. If you have Macs in your shop, you'll be able to use hot folders to print directly to this RIP. But for the purpose of this demonstration, I'm just going to show you how I drag and drop a file into the RIP. So once the RIP's all installed and ready to go, I simply select the job, drag it into the RIP queue. And that's going to go ahead and take a few seconds to load. And while it's loading, I want to uh, answer a couple questions that you have. Uh, the first is, does the EFI RIP support trapping? when done in your application, it will pass that trapping information through. However, it doesn't do any trapping inside of the application. The second question is, uh, is it FM or AM screening? Now this is true clear center rosette halftones. So it is a true AM screening, which is, uh, which is really, really great when you're trying to do anywhere from 88 to 175 LPI. The RIP does all of that processing and separation for you. A few other questions we have uh, are dot gain and printer cal uh, press calibration available, and all of those features are available inside the EFI RIP. Uh, I'm not going to explain that all to you right now, but if you go to our website, we'll provide some more information and some training on exactly how you use those features of the EFI RIP. Now, again, I mentioned I loaded in a two-color print job. Uh, that's perfect for the majority of your work, but we want to remind you that this system itself is excellent for four color work as well. It does a really good job doing four color separations and four color printing. So now that I have our job set here inside the RIP, I'm basically just going to show you that I've done a preset to center the job horizontally, to center it from the top, so we've included the 0.6 inches of a gripper edge in the plate bend. So it's all set and lined up inside the RIP. Now this RIP is also capable of doing banners and posters, etc. And all I have to do is set a preset within the RIP itself to enable those fu that functionality and to make it work very simply by selecting from the drop down menu here on the screen. A few of the questions that came up uh, related to the EFI Express RIP um, is where can I get more training? And a great place to get training is on our website, as I mentioned. There's going to be a, a number of on-screen videos that will show you a little bit more about how to use the EFI RIP. What if you don't like the EFI RIP, and what if you want to use another third-party RIP? Well, there are a few other RIPs out there that will support the Epson Stylus Pro 7900 computer-to-plate system. The best place to find out about those RIPs is on our website at www.proimaging.epson.com. Uh, and also, the RIP is a great way to produce plates, to produce banners and posters. But the printer itself is a standard Epson Stylus Pro 7900 printer, which means that you can also install and use the standard Windows or even Mac printer driver directly from your computer. So with that, now that we've had this job queued and we're ready to go, I'm going to go ahead and click print, and we're going to show you how we load a plate and we print the job. So now we're going to show you how to load a plate on the printer itself. Now for the purposes of this demonstration, we're actually using the small plate guide, which means that you can leave the roll paper loaded behind. Just make sure the door is closed. Now if you were using the large plate guide, you would have to go ahead and remove that roll paper, but you can actually load this in and out without having to realign it. Now all you got to do is make sure the platen is open by pressing the E-platen button sliding the plate in and down, making sure it's tight against the top and the bottom peaks there on the plate guide. Press the close button. When it asks you to press the pause button, you remove your left hand and hit the pause button. Now the printer will go ahead and prepare and make sure that sheet is accurately aligned inside the printer. After that, it's going to go ahead and start printing the plates that we printed from the EFI RIP before. Now one thing you want to be very careful of is that you don't load plates that have any bent corners. 
So you may want to make sure you carefully inspect the edges of the plate to make sure there's no burrs or bent corners because that could damage the printer in the end. So after it's done printing here, we'll go ahead and show you how to cure it. All right, so it took about seven minutes to print this 13 by 19 inch plate. I'm gonna go ahead and unload it. The uh, control panel says paper out, load paper. All I gotta do to unload the plate is hit the down button and the plate comes out like so. I'm gonna go ahead and feed that into the plate curing unit. The great thing about this system is while this plate is curing, I can go ahead and load up and print the second color for our job. So while the first plate is curing, the second plate is actually printing. It'll take about seven to eight minutes to cure that 13 by 19 inch plate. The entire process from print to rip to cure, about 15 minutes and then we'll be on press. So it took about seven minutes to cure this 13 by 19 inch plate. What's nice and important to remember is that while we were curing this plate, the second plate was printing on our printer over there. Now if we were doing a four color job, we do this four times. The EFI rip itself is managing that, so all you gotta do is load plates and run them through the plate curing unit. Now that this job is cured and ready to go, we're gonna go ahead over to our punch here. This is a standard plate punch. Now the system doesn't come with a plate punch. Plate punches usually comes with a press. So you do have to purchase this. If you don't have one, contact one of your resellers and they'll be able to set you up with one. Simply loading in the plate with the plate bend up correctly. I'm gonna go ahead and punch it like that. It's notched, it's ready to be put on press. Okay, so I'm here with Bill, and he's the director of the Expedex Technology Center. And Bill's going to actually run these plates on press for us. Here you go, Bill. Thanks, Reed. So hey Bill, how'd it go? Went good. Take a look. What do you think? Well, I, I'm amazed. You look at uh, leaving up to the 90% area and all the half tones, how clear they are, and even the lay on the solid areas is yeah, incredible. That's pretty good. Yeah, it's pretty good density in there. Well, hey, we got a few other questions that a couple people have asked. I'm hoping you can help us answer. Sure. Um, the first is, uh, what do you need to do with these Epson Direct plates in terms of pre-wetting? Is there anything different required? The only thing you're going to do is after you mount the plates is you're going to wet the plate down with some fountain solution. Just if you've run polyester plates before, very similar type technique. What about with, uh, with metal plates if you've run metal plates before? Again, the only difference you're going to do is you're going to pre-wet the plate, wipe them down by hand uh, just to get a coating from the fountain solution on the plate before you have ink touch the plate and you would be just fine. Uh, a lot of people are asking about uh, press chemistry, actually, and what can you recommend for these plates versus, say, polyester versus aluminum? What I like to recommend is, first off, what we used here today was RBP Unitrol 192. Uh, this, like a polyester type fountain solution, is going to provide the coating that's needed. It's a higher acidic fountain solution. If you also go on Epson's website, you'll find another list of fountain solutions that would work acceptably. What, what about uh, plate cleaner now, for example? Well, RBP also provides a, a plate cleaner that we use that's effective HydroClean. Uh, again, if you go on the Epson website, you can find a list of plate cleaners that'll work just fine. Uh, one other thing people have been asking is uh, deletion pens. Do deletion pens work on the Epson Direct Plate? Deletion pens also can be used. You can use a pencil eraser to get rid of some minor flaws or, or dots or spots you may find on the plates. That's a great tip. Um, what about press wash when you wash down the press? Do you have to do anything different than you do today? No, nothing different. Press wash that's acceptable for the rollers for that press manufacturer will work just fine. Blanket wash also. And the last question about uh, chemistry really is uh, about the ink. Uh, can you use standard inks? Can you use metallic inks? What's the story on the ink? Standard inks, standard conventional inks will do just fine. Inks that would work in this uh, duplicator press also would work just fine. 
And yes, that would include metallic inks. Do you have to gum the plates before you put them on or afterwards? Absolutely not. Don't have to gum the plates afterward either. If you're going to reuse the plate again, all you have to do is make sure you clean it off with the plate cleaner and some fountain solution. Make sure there's no residual ink left behind. You can store the plate, sure. use it again, no problem. That's, that's excellent. Um, so how many impressions do you tend to see uh, when using the Epson Direct Plate technology? 15 to 20,000 impressions is the norm. Uh, you may find that on some substrates, some uncoated stocks that are a little aggressive, you may have less impressions, uh, maybe around 15,000. Or sometimes with the coverage area, how much you clean the plate, you may get slightly less. But other than that, again, 15 to 20,000 is the range. And last question is, what about LPI? Uh, we, I know we ran this job here at uh, 175. Um, what's the range of uh, LPI that you can get with these plates? Yes, 175 is where you're going to top out with that product. And again, anything in between or less than 175, no problem. Well, hey, thanks a lot for helping sure, us out no today. Problem, I appreciate Reed. all your help, man. Take care. So now we've showed you the entire workflow. We've ripped it with the EFI rip. We've printed the plates on the Epson Stylus Pro 7900. We've cured them on our plate curing unit. And we've run the plates on press to produce a final image. So before we close, I want to answer a few more questions people have had on the Epson Direct Plate Aluminum technology. The first is, are the plates anodized? And the short answer is yes. Do the plates have grain? Well, because the plate has a coating surface on top of the aluminum that's specific to Epson Direct Plate, there actually is no grain on the plate. Next question is, are these plates light sensitive? And the answer is no. The plates are not light sensitive, which means you can leave them out and not have to worry about damage from light sources. Um, what is the shelf life of these plates? These plates don't have a finite shelf life. They can last a pretty long time on the shelf. Can you cut these plates? Uh, yes, as a matter of fact, you can cut these plates, but you have to be very careful not to leave bent corners or burrs, because that could damage the Epson Stylus Pro 7900 printer or your press blanket when you load it on press. The next question we have is, what sizes is Epson Direct Plate available in? And the best way to find out is go to our website where we'll list the 16 sizes the plates are currently available in. If your plate size isn't listed, contact your Epson authorized CTP reseller and they'll be able to get those plates for you. Now with that, I've given you an overview of the entire system. I want to remind you of a few things. First, it is a completely chemical free process. It does give you superior press output. It is easy to use and it does have a low cost of ongoing operation. Remember, you only have to provide plates and ink to the printer. This only requires power. For more information on the Epson Stylus Pro 7900 computer to plate system, you can go to www.proimaging.epson.com or contact your Epson authorized computer to plate reseller.